my time covering business gurus and those in the self-help industry, there was one name that I kept encountering over and over again, but for some reason, until now, I had unintentionally ignored. Mel Robbins. And it's possible that I let her slip by the wayside so long because I assumed that she was just like an extension of Tony Robbins because they have the same last name. I thought maybe she's his sister, maybe she's his wife. They have the same last name, they have the same scammy business practices, but nope. Turns out to just be a very unfortunate coincidence. The two of them are not actually related at all. Now I've heard some people saying that Mel Robbins is somewhat not like other gurus, that her books are helpful and that the things that she says have a little more validity backing them up. But after we spent a week following Mel Robbins on the Your Morning Guru show, reacting to her speeches, looking at her multi-level marketing connections, and looking at the overall business guru magnetic poetry present in all of her speeches and throughout her books, we have determined that... Guys, I think this is another case of same shit, different but. Today we are going to dive into Mel Robbins, her connections with multi-level marketing companies, and unpack some of the ableism with in the speeches that she gives. Hope y'all are ready. Let's do it. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. Welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. And speaking of books, if you guys enjoy this video about Mel Robin, let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in having me read and review some of her books. Don't forget to subscribe to the second channel, Your Morning Guru, where as I mentioned, we did an entire week on Mel Robbins, so you won't want to miss that. For all the criticisms that we did have of Mel Robbins, not every single thing about her was a problem. For example, one of the things that we thought was really cool was the way she put together a press kit and the way she managed her website, which is actually a great segue into today's sponsor who helped me build my website. Today's video is sponsored by Zyro, a website builder that helped me create my own website, SavvyWritesBooks.com, which is linked in the description below. Zyro lets anyone create amazing websites and launch professional online stores without any need for coding skills or any web design experience. Best of all, Zyro is super affordable for those looking to start a website or even a new online store. If you're interested in creating a website of your own, you can use Zyro's limited time deal where you can get a discount of up to 71% off with a custom domain and three months free along with any yearly plan. To access this special discount, use the code SAVVY or click the link in my description box below. I had a really easy time building my website with Zyro. Their drag and drop editing options let me be creative when customizing the layout of my own site, and I appreciated their store layout options. As you guys know, I have a variety of different components to my business, including this channel, my merch, my morning show, my morning show merch, my company Forever Home Friends, my signed novels, and more. So breaking up my website and my store into categories really helped helped me organize my website and make it really user friendly. Zyro also has excellent 24 seven customer support. So even if you're like me, as you guys know, I'm not tech savvy, even though my name is savvy. Even if you're like me and don't know how to code a website, you'll still be able to create your own website that you're proud of. So if you guys are interested in getting a website of your own, go ahead and click on the link in my description below to get started. So don't forget to check out that link in the description below. Also, quick thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys make this channel the amazing place that it is. I really appreciate you guys. Patreon supporters' names are up on the screen and in the description below. Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up can link their own small businesses below, so be sure to check those out as well. Generally, whenever we follow any type of guru on the Your Morning Guru Show, one of the first things I ask is, are they connected to multi-level marketing companies in any way, shape, perform, or is that not their thing? With Mel Robbins, we found out that not only is she connected with the MLM Monate, but that she also has business partnerships with none other than the network marketing pro Eric Worre. If you're interested in more information on Eric Worre, I did an entire review of his book GoPro, which I will link up in the cards. Definitely check that out, but he is kind of the pyramid that encapsulates the pyramid is what I call him. He not only recruits people into an MLM, he trains people on how to recruit people into an MLM, so his he sells the courses on how to sell the shovels to people 
people in the gold rush, basically. He's another layer of MLM on top of it. We do not like Eric Worre here. And in her speech for Eric Worre is where I found a lot of really strange rhetoric in the way that she talked about things. So we're going to react to that in just a moment. But first, I wanted to show you guys this video of Mel Robbins that I found from the 2021 Monate Conference. Hey, Monate Market Partners. I'm Mel Robbins. If you don't know me, you're gonna. I'm the best-selling author of The Five Second Rule. I got a new book coming out in September, The High Five Habit. And speaking of September, guess what? I'm going to be live in person at State Farm Arena in Atlanta for elevate. Okay, so first thing, she has these two books out, one called The Five Second Rule and one called The High Five Habit. And the idea behind these books is, I mean, I agree with the premise on the surface, same as I talk about like with Grant Cardone's 10X Rule, I agree with the premise on the surface, but when you take it too far and you apply it to MLMs, it becomes very dangerous. The idea behind The Five Second Rule and The High Fiving Yourself Rule, right, is that you should be making decisions somewhat based on instinct, not completely based on instinct, but The Five Second Rule is like, okay, if there's something you want to do and you know it'll be a good thing for you to do but you're just putting it off or you just feel some kind of mental roadblock just count down five four three two one and do it it's kind of the same advice that you get for things that's like if this thing is going to take you less than 10 minutes to do just do it right now instead of putting it off and keeping it in your mind so i kind of get the philosophy behind those rules and i don't think there's anything inherently bad about those but when you apply it to mlms which we're going to see in a minute and it becomes oh someone's trying to recruit you into their mlm don't take extra time to research just count down five four three two one and make a decision not a big fan of that and as well, the whole like high-fiving yourself rule. The high-five habit is about how every morning you should high-five yourself in the mirror and it's supposed to just like get you excited about the day or whatever. It's more feel-good business guru bullshit, honestly. But let's continue. So basically, according to this video, Mel Robbins is going to be, well, she already was in the past because this was in September of 2021, but she is doing a commercial about how she is speaking at the Monate conference for the market partners, which mean the distributors of Monate, which means basically the customers. In an MLM, right, if you're a distributor, you're basically a customer. So she is involved with Monate. I couldn't find the full speech she did for Monate online, which is a shame, but we do have the full speech she did for Eric Worre, so we're going to look at that in a second. Monations United 2021. This is the first live presentation I am going to have given in almost 18 months. So you better believe I'm going to fly into that arena like I've been launched by a rocket ship. So you better register because I'm going to be bringing the A game all this time. I understand why people like her because she does, she is high energy. She's like, I'm going to launch like a rocket. I'm going to fly in there with my A game. I get why people like her. I think she's got, she's got this strong energy. But again, when people are very likable, when people have that strong energy, when people say things that are backed up by some level of fact, that's how they get you because they make themselves likable to you. And then when you're vulnerable, like being in an MLM, they'll do things like convince you to stay in that MLM, right? We reacted to so many Rachel Hollis speeches at MLM conferences. When you get a motivational keynote speaker at an MLM conference, what they're telling you is basically advice for how to stay in the MLM. They're never going to advise you to leave. My personal opinion is that the only good advice someone can get you for MLM is to leave the company. But we know that's not what she's going to do because she's being paid by Monate. Ends up energy. I cannot wait to help you elevate your game. You're going to learn the five second rule, the high five habit, all kinds of tactical science backed proven tools. To I can teach you the high five habit right now. You high five yourself in the mirror every morning. I can also teach you the five second rule right now. You count down five, four, three, two, one, and then you make a decision. That's all it is. She's managed to expand these topics into full books, basically, when in reality, I, the way I see building habits is like this, right? When it's one habit, it's really hard to build an entire book off of one habit unless you're just going to talk about yourself a lot. You're going to ramble a lot. Maybe she brings in a little bit of research. Again, if you guys want me to read and review the books, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a whole video on that. But dragging these concepts out, it's like Grant Cardone's 10x rule. The 10x rule is that you should aim for bigger goals because if you fall short of a bigger goal, then you still accomplish more than if you'd made your goal smaller and reached it. And I agree with that on the surface, but he didn't need to expand it as far as he did and write multiple books on the topic and go into all of these extensive stories and testimonies. All it is is personal branding for you at that point without any additional benefit to the audience, at least in my experience. But basically, yeah, if you want to try out a new habit, if you want to try high-fiving yourself in the mirror every morning, you don't need to pay Mel Robbins to do it. You can just high-five the mirror and see if it makes you feel better. If you want to do the five-second rule, you can just count down from five every time you're not sure about something and see if it helps you make decisions. Uh, that The power's in your hands. It's not in Mel Robbins' hands. Now, this was only a brief commercial, so there wasn't a lot to go on for what she talked about to Monate. But we know that 
that if you're connected with one MLM, you're often connected with multiple MLMs when you're someone at this type of level. And if this had been a mistake, if she had later said, you know what, I've later realized that MLMs are, are not the greatest thing. You guys know I have been critical of Gary V. I'm not a fan of the fact that he sells NFTs. I have major issues with that. I think that he has a lot of uh, ethical issues. But one thing I will say is that I appreciate that he has specifically said to his audience, I don't like network marketing. Now, has he apologized for speaking at the Beachbody conference in 2016? Maybe, maybe not. So that's something we maybe need to look at a little bit more. But I can, I can at least give someone credit when they say, no, I don't like MLMs. Mel Robbins, from what I've seen, has not done that yet, and in fact has partnered herself up with Eric Worre, one of the greatest MLM scammers of all time. Let's take a look. So this is a speech she gave back in 2017. The video is called Push Yourself to Change, which sounds like a Daft Punk song. We're gonna put it on one and a half speed because I will not have Eric copyright claiming my ass. Not today. Not today, Satan! Let's see what Mel Robbins has to say at Eric Worre's GoPro Network Marketing Conference. What you need in life is the ability to push yourself. You see, you're going to leave here super inspired. You're going to know exactly what you need to do. You're going to learn from the experts. You're going to have a roadmap. You're going to be so excited and so empowered and so educated. But when you get back to your life, it's up to you. Do you know how to push yourself? Well, this is how you're going to do it. You can use the rule in three ways, okay? So first of all, this whole thing, this is the exact same shit that Rachel Hollis says in her speeches at MLM conferences when we reacted to Lindsay Teague Moreno at the Young Living conference. They all say this, right? Every speaker says this thing at a conference where they'll be like, okay, right now you're at this conference. You're going to be learning so much. You're going to be so hyped up and excited. And then you're going to go back to your everyday life and you're going to struggle to put these things into practice. Well, here's how you do it. They always say this thing because to an extent there's truth to it, right? When we were reading the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I think is actually a decent book overall. Uh, he brought up a good point in this book, which is that a lot of times we build habits when we're in an unfamiliar environment, and then when we return to our normal environment, it's hard to keep up those new habits. It's one reason that a lot of people sometimes struggle with rehab, because if they go to a rehab facility, they learn how to adopt healthy habits in that environment, and then when they go back home, there's a lot of triggers that they have at home that they didn't have at the facility that are making it easier to slip back into old bad habits, right? So to an extent, there is some truth to this idea of you went somewhere else and gained this inspiration. You went somewhere else and you got this good work ethic going. Now, when you get back home, are you going to slip back into old habits or are you going to do these new habits? So there is some truth to it. So I get why they say it, but it's not original. They all say it. And on top of that, when you're saying it, once again, it's one of those things where it can be good advice, but when you put it in an MLM context, it suddenly becomes bad advice. So it's one of those things where it's like, once you get back home, are you going to stop selling for your MLM? Are you not going to keep recruiting people? Because we know the GoPro conference that Eric Worre does. We know what kind of dude Eric Worre is. He's all about recruit people as much as possible. Make that pyramid as big as you possibly can. So the advice she's giving right here, I'm not actually that much of a fan of in the MLM context. So that's one thing we have to keep in mind. A lot of advice is going to be true, but when you put it in the context of a multi-level marketing audience, it becomes scammy. You can use it to change any behavior in the moment. I'm going to show you examples of these. You can use it to find courage, to speak up, to show up, to do things you wouldn't normally do. You can use it for mind control. Let me show you how. You can use it for mind control. Now, I know she's going to elaborate and she's going to talk about how it's about like reprogramming your own mind to make better decisions that are more beneficial for you. But the phrase mind control, like, did you have to? Did you have to call it mind control? Was that meant to be funny or was that like a Freudian slip? Was that her acknowledging that you can use it for mind control? In fact, I'm Eric Worre and I are controlling all of your minds right now. Say that you got a bunch of people that you want to talk to. You want to recruit. You're excited. You go into the meeting, but they look at you like this. Yeah. You go into a meeting to recruit a bunch of people. She even said recruit. So we know Mel Robbins is supporting the MLM structure. She said you got a lot of people you want to recruit, not sell your world changing product to, not adopt as an external customer, recruit into the business in a level below you. So we're not talking about affiliate marketing here. We're talking about pyramid schemes. She says, okay, you walk into the room and there's people you want to recruit and they're looking at you like this. Uh, maybe don't recruit them. Maybe leave the MLM and realize that nobody's interested in your stupid product, Karen. You're like, oh no, I'm not gonna say anything today. They look like they're in a bad mood. I don't think I can do this today. Yes, you can. Five, four, three, two, one. Say it. The only thing holding you back from recruiting the team that you want, from going after the prospects that really could expand your life and business, is you. Uh, that's a blatant lie. This is the lie that MLMs sell you. The only thing that's stopping you from recruiting the team you want is you. No, it's a system that is mathematically set up so that you will run out of human beings in the earth to recruit, let alone external customers from the business itself. It's mathematically impossible if you join after a certain level 
to be able to actually recruit enough people to make enough income, let alone have enough external customers. But let's be real, in a lot of these companies, especially ones Eric Vorey is involved with, external customers don't actually matter that much. Five second hesitation. That's all that's holding you back. There is a five second window between the things that you know you should do and you actually do. Again, in a non-MLM context, there may be some things like, okay, you, you're going into a meeting for work, you're nervous to get started talking, maybe, yeah, count down five, four, three, two, one, and then get started on giving your presentation because you have to launch yourself into it at some point, right? Maybe in that case, it's a way to kind of get yourself started, give yourself that launch. But when it comes to an MLM context, saying that the only thing holding you between recruiting Susie into your MLM and the five, four, is, is the five, four, three, two, one countdown, that's just a lie. Because the way MLMs are structured, you're going to run out of people in the world. Maybe Susie's just not interested in your product. Maybe Susie is anti-MLM herself. Maybe Susie doesn't want to get caught up in your stupid scam, Mel. Like this guy, who learned about the five-second rule, started a business, and he is now one of the top, top, top real estate agents for recruiting. Why? He's the top agents for recruiting. That's pretty amazing. He gets three whole likes on Facebook. Wow, he's one of the top. Because every time he sees somebody and has an instinct to talk to them about his business, five, four, three, two, one, and he goes. Here's another way that you can use a rule. You know how we do that thing where you, uh, you, you say to yourself, all right, that's it, today, today I'm an exercise, right? So you get on your, your exercise gear and then you spend all day in your tights. Yes, I do that too. Or I had this one day like that where I went to work in my exercise clothes and then my friend at the end of work was like, you wanna go to Chili's for margaritas and Y'all know I love my tropical sunrise margarita at Chili's and my guacamole burger, which they have stopped selling on the menu in the past couple years. And I'm very upset about that because that's what I ate at my bachelorette party. Anyway, I went to Chili's instead of working out. But who cares? I'm still in shape. Or you get down to the kitchen and you're ready to, you know, you got your, your joggers on and your sneakers on and then you pick up your phone and, oh, look at that, 45 minutes later, I don't have time to do this anymore. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Blowing things off is a habit. If you've got five minutes, you can do a plank. I know the advice is terrible, but you can still do it. Why am I telling you this? Five, four, three, two, one. Because this is not an this is not a tool that's just about torturing you. It's a tool that unlocks the power in you. If you keep blowing off the little stuff five seconds at a time, how the heck can you do the big stuff? Again, I feel like she stole the. I don't know if she stole this from James Clear. His whole thing is like, if you make yourself one percent better every day over time, you'll make yourself a lot closer to your goals toward the end, right? Versus like, if you skip a goal every day, you're only docking yourself one percent. So after you can come back from it easily, but if you let it build up, it becomes harder. And I agree with that advice. I don't know if she's stealing that from him, but either way, I don't know if this is anything that's super new. The truth about exercise, the truth about selling, the truth about building a business is the first step. The first step is the hardest. Five, four, three, two, one will get you out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one will get you out the door. Five, four, three, two, one. It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. I get, I, again, I get the purpose of how this could appeal to people because the idea is a lot of times we're just lacking the motivation to launch ourselves in and to get started in the first place. I felt that before too, especially when it comes to waking up, getting myself out of bed. I have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning a lot of the time too. And when it comes to starting the workout, that's why I often schedule times at the gym and go to the gym at those times. I'm going to start probably signing up for classes at the gym soon. But doing workouts at home, sometimes that can be difficult to get myself started as well. I get it. But again, it's applying it to an MLM that makes it the scammy part. It's simple and it's annoying. Here's the most powerful way that you can use the rule. So, you know, a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, that chick must have been born like that, you know, annoying and confident. No, no, not at all. Actually, I suffered from anxiety and panic attacks for 20 years. Okay, here's the thing. One, I was born annoying and confident. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably realize that from my Brene Brown video. I've just always been a really confident, loud, super annoying person. Actually, I was very quiet as a kid. I was a depressed ass child. We're not getting into that. But I also suffered from anxiety and panic attacks. Being loud and confident and annoying and suffering from anxiety and panic attacks are not mutually exclusive. I really hate this narrative. This is where we're going to get start to get into the ableism of all of it. I really hate this narrative that people who are confident and extroverted can't also be struggling with mental illness because for me I have been neurodivergent my whole life I have suffered from anxiety I've had panic attacks I deal with OCD issues on the daily and I'm also very extroverted and confident and don't have any issues speaking my mind and again that's not to say that that's the case for everybody there are plenty of people who have social anxiety and who have trouble voicing their feelings into words and things like that and that can also be informed by mental illness and by neurodivergence and things like that and that is totally fine there's that there's different ways to go about it it's the dichotomy that she drew that's the issue for me when she comes out here and says you might think i've always been confident but actually i suffered from panic attacks you can be confident and suffer from panic attacks so her saying one thing doesn't negate the other that's kind of the issue i have with that. They started in my 20s, and um, when I started law school, that should have been a sign that I didn't want to be a lawyer, but I soldiered on. 
It got really bad when I had our first daughter. I was almost hospitalized postpartum. Okay, but here's the thing. That's not actually a sign you don't want to be a lawyer. Having panic attacks in law school doesn't mean you're not meant to be a lawyer. It just means you have, you might have anxiety disorder and you might need to see a psychiatrist for it. So again, I think she's probably making a joke there, but a lot of the stuff, as we're going to keep seeing in a second, she's very, very irresponsible in the way she talks about mental health here. I um, took Zoloft for 20 years. Oh my god, are we about to get into medication shaming? Because I am not here for that. Y'all, I take medication. I take medication every day, and if I don't take it every day, I am a mess. I take my medication for my OCD because it has made my life better, it has made me a more stable person, and it has made me not just more productive, but also overall, uh, you know, happier, having less extreme mood swings, things like that. I used to have extreme manic and depressive episodes. I still have some OCD mannerisms and symptoms and habits, but my OCD habits used to be out the, out, off the wall, like, constant things that I would be doing. And now I feel like I have a much more control over my life. I can manage myself a lot better. So she's over here like, I used to take Zoloft. Is she about to tell me that she stopped taking her prescribed medication because of her own self-help guru tactics that she devised herself? Because that is disgusting if so. And by the way, I just want to make something very, very clear. Medication is not the answer for everybody. It is the answer for some people, but for other people, a different approach might work better, a different type of therapy, uh, some other medical solution that's not medication. There are various solutions to these problems. Mental illness is a very complicated topic, and even most neuroscientists scientists don't have a complete understanding of the human brain yet because it is so complex and there are so many factors that influence everything. So because of that, there are going to be different solutions for everyone, even to similar problems or problems that share similar symptoms. So I just really hate this whole concept of, I got to stop taking my medication and presenting that as if it's something you too can aspire to. Because again, for some people, maybe for Mel, medication wasn't the right solution and something else worked better for her, and that is okay for her. But to promote that to other people is incredibly dangerous. Talk to a doctor, talk to a licensed therapist, talk to a licensed psychiatrist before making these decisions. That is my disclaimer. I hate that self-help gurus try to encroach on this mental health space and try to act as if they are experts in this too. Drives me up the wall. Let's continue, Mel. Four years ago, as I noticed that I went from facing bankruptcy and, and losing our home equity line and blowing through life savings to now having a you know multi-million dollar business and partnerships with CNN and Success Magazine. Okay, that's why you don't get a home equity loan. I'm sorry, I know that sounds that sounds maybe victim blamey, but like I talked about this in my book Savvy Business Owner. When I went to the bank and tried to get a loan for expanding my business, the only type of loan I could get because my business was still so small, and it still is. My business is small. A lot of business loans are meant for businesses that are bigger, that are bringing in at least hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you have a small business that you just run for yourself, for your own income, and you're the only person, or maybe it's you and a couple contract employees or something, business loans aren't really super friendly to those type of things because they want a bigger thing with a bigger return and bigger interest, right? So a lot of times the only loan you'll qualify for is either a business credit card, which the fees on those are huge, or a home equity loan if you are a homeowner, which basically means you have to put your home on the line. I chose to take nothing from the bank and instead, you know, worked in other ways to, to expand my business. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on a tangent. It's all in my book, Savvy Business Owner. Uh, link in description below. Sign copies of that are going to be available soon, by the way, guys. Signed copies coming soon. I'll make an announcement. But I chose not to do a home equity loan, one, because I'm married and I didn't want Tyler to feel that I was imposing anything from my business onto his life and making it his problem, but also because uh, I didn't want, if anything went wrong, to lose my home. I wanted to keep my business and my personal assets separate. So I don't, I, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I have absolutely no qualifications to be advising people on things. Home equity loan was scary for me and she's like, we're gonna lose our home equity loan. I'm not, I'm not a fan of those. Yeah, incredible, right? And, and more importantly, more importantly, a 20 year marriage that we just celebrated. So, so I started using this tool to change everything, my income, my business, my self monitoring, being a nicer spouse, being a, a more patient parent. And I wonder, God, I wonder if I could use this thing to actually cure myself of anxiety. No, Mel, no, talk to a therapist. Ask your therapist, ask your psychiatrist if it can cure you of anxiety. Don't, don't say, huh, can I cure myself? Am I a doctor? Could you imagine, guys, remember how I waited like three years for breast reduction surgery and complained about my boobs on this channel all the time until finally now I have normal sized boobs? Okay, okay. Can you imagine if I was like, huh, I wonder if I can use my own resources to cure myself of big titty syndrome. I'm just gonna go get a knife out of the kitchen. 
Could you imagine? I can't believe, I just wish people treated mental health more like they treat, like the brain's part of the body, so mental health is physical health. But I wish people treated it more like health issues that you can see with your eyes, right? If you were like, you know what? I'm gonna try to cure my own broken leg. I wonder if I can do all this. I wonder if I can cure my own infection without a doctor's help. And part of the problem is that a lot of times people do have to resort to that because the US healthcare system is a massive issue. So I don't blame anyone who does that, but I blame people who promote that. I wonder if I could cure my own anxiety. Mel, shut the fuck up. You can. Let me show you how. Oh, she just said I can. She just said I can cure. I can cure it by myself. I didn't need to see a doctor. Mental health professionals. Who are they? I'm gonna use an example that a lot of us share, which is the fear of flying. Right? You know what I do when I get on a plane? The first thing I okay, so I used to have a big fear of flying because I I am very afraid of heights. Airplanes stress me out. They stress me out a lot less though since I got on medication. Kind of funny how that works out, isn't it? I do. I think about the plane crashing. And then I think about that one photo. You know that photo that's floating around online of the plane? It's on the ground, but there's just that hole on the side of it, and one row got sucked right out of the thing, right? And I think, oh my gosh, I'm in that row. And, and then if we hit turbulence, what do I do? I start pulling out the phone, and I think te I'm texting the kids because for crying out loud, if I'm going to die in a fiery plane crash, I'd better send them a great text before I die because they got to do a PowerPoint, right? i got to show the world that I was the best mom ever, even when I was facing death. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're all nuts. Absolutely nuts. So are you. You're giggling because you know you're nuts, too. If I were to put a speaker on your head and broadcast you, we would drag you out of here and lock you up. You're insane. I get that these are jokes, but but I think I would be- I'm usually pretty forgiving of jokes because I think most things can be funny. But it's in the context that she was saying, cured my own anxiety, and yes, you can cure your own anxiety, and her saying that seriously and then going into these jokes, I think is a problem. If she just went into these jokes, like, I don't know, from a different perspective, it's all kind of about the context. I think when it comes to what humor is offensive versus what humor is funny, it's all about context. The context here is that Mel is genuinely trying to convince us that with her methods and her books, we too can cure our own anxiety and recruit more people into our MLMs. Who the fuck are psychiatrists? Here's the thing that's the problem. You listen to it. Panic is nothing more than worrying that's gotten out of control. That's all that it is. You can cure yourself of it. I'm telling you right now. All you have to do, the moment you notice that your mind goes from the prefrontal cortex to the basal ganglia, which is where your habit of anxiety and worrying and self-doubt is, all you gotta do, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, can someone who's good at brain stuff check on those brain things for me? Is that, is that true? Does she, is she actually naming the parts of the brain correctly? And then redirect yourself to think about something empowering. If you're afraid of talking to people, so you've got this big plan and you got the thing you're gonna say and you're all excited and then all of a sudden the second you see them, you start feeling deflated and scared and self-doubt, that is a habit. You can change how you think. Five, four, three, two, one. Awaken your prefrontal cortex and put in an anchor thought of your dreams. Put in an anchor thought of you high fiving that person when they join your team. Put in an anchor thought. An anchor thought of your dreams. Business guru, magnetic poetry. Ah, uh, it sucks for you and it sucks for me. Business guru, magnetic poetry. Life happens three me. I just made that up right now. It's a shitty song, but I said five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna sing a stupid song on YouTube. And then at the end right here, there's a advertisement to get our tickets now for the Network Marketing Pro conference run by Eric Worre, where Tony Robbins, I guess, is going to be at too, because that's Tony Robbins right there. So we got Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins. It's a ra round robin. We're having a round robin. We're going to the Rockin' Robbins conference where we're all going to die. So what did you guys think of Mel Robbins? Please let me know in the comments below. I think she is a complete scammer. I have absolutely no faith in her whatsoever, but if you guys want, I will read her books. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to read High Five Habit or Five Second Rule or both. I'll probably order them both. I've got a lot of books that I'm working on reading right now because there's a lot of new books coming out. We've got some deep daves coming up soon, so stay tuned for more deep daves. I will see you guys again on Monday on Your Morning Guru, and next week I have a bunch of bonus videos coming out on this channel, so I will see you for multiple videos on this channel as well. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. In the meantime, please don't forget to support small businesses and have a fantastic start to your Friday. Bye! Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.